Welcome to uh, how to use a metric drum micrometer. In a prior video, already on my channel, we uh, showed how to use this inch micrometer, or met drum micrometer. Um, just a little comparison. First of all, each of these little graduation, each little line, each graduation is worth one thousandths of an inch. Whereas on this metric, here comes the metric one, the metric drum micrometer, each little line or graduation is worth 0.1 millimeters. And that's part, that's really the heart and soul of what we're going to do today is, of course, do this metric micrometer. Let's get familiar with what I call the beam of the micrometer. This main beam here. On one side we have, you can see that or not, we have some odd, uh, even number, sorry, uh, here's a 30, here's a 32. And what's confusing is the, these are represented in centimeters. Whereas on the dial, this is all in either uh, a meter, going from zero to one, one to two, that'd be one meter, and each little line, as I mentioned earlier, between uh, this number and this whole number is 0.1 millimeter, okay? Lastly, I'm gonna show you the, I guess what I would call the odd number side. Uh, here's 29 and 31. That'd be like 290 millimeters, but again, they just dropped to zero, I, I guess, for manufacturing purposes, I don't know. Um, and here would be uh, 31 or centimeters or 310 millimeters. So that's a little orientation to this micrometer. I guess there is one more set of lines to pay attention to. I'm going to slide this out of the way. In between each of these large numbers is another little slash or hash mark, a little graduation, if you will, on the beam. And each of those uh, lines represent two millimeters. Compare that to what we what we taught in the uh, inch movie, inch micrometer, drum micrometer. Um, each small line on this, of course, is in inches, and, and the from. Uh, this line to this line is one inch, but each line in between is an eighth of an inch. Of course, one eighth of an inch is 125 thousandths. We're not going to dwell too much more on uh, the, the inch micrometer, but we are going to, again, uh, focus on the metric one. So, just for a reference, and this helps me, one millimeter equals about uh, 39 thousandths, I'll just round it off to 40 thousandths, whereas 0.1 millimeter is 39 ten thousandths, but I'm just going to round it off to four thousandths. Now this is helpful when we're machining a drum or a rotor to have these values or comparisons in mind, because quite often we'll say take off four or five thousandths, take off eight thousandths, ten thousandths of an inch. So uh, in the metric world we'll probably say something like, yeah, let's take off a 0.1 or 0.2 or 0.3 uh, millimeters possibly. So I, again, that's a reference point, at least for me. Let's get measuring. I'm going to start off with what I call brake drum number one. Now brake drum number one, most drums have a indication on them, meaning a maximum diameter that the drum should never exceed because of wear or machining. So this drum obviously is 230.1 millimeters. And so drum number one, I've already written that down. But let's find out its actual size. Because what this maximum diameter value means is this surface or this diameter should never exceed or go beyond, again, 230.1 millimeters. And uh, if it gets out that far, that means this area here, this band, uh, is probably getting too thin and have a tendency to warp. And that leads to drum warp and 
maybe less effective braking. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and measure it. So, knowing that this is 230 uh, millimeter drum, and this is of course in centimeters, I've got to put this on 23 and 23. There's a 23, or 230 millimeters, 23 centimeters. Okay, and this little arrow is pointing to, that's the edge I'll use for the 20, to set up for 23 or 230 millimeters, sorry. And here's my arrow or indicator, and I'm going to go to the 23 on here as well. Okay, so I am supposedly all set up to measure a drum that's 230 millimeters. Now I'm going to simulate one thing before I do this. This little plunger on the end, if it were to read exactly zero, this drum would be exactly 230 millimeters. Let's find out what it actually measures. So I'm going to put it in the drum, and maybe I'll slide it over a little bit closer. And as always, with this drum micrometer, we're going to rock it back and forth a little bit to find out the maximum diameter of the circle. So what's the largest? Now once again, if this needle had it registered or read here on the zero, it would be exactly 230 millimeters. But we're smaller than that. Here's a minus one. Of course, that's a positive one, that's a positive two, a positive three. So we're smaller than 230, which is good news if I wanted to reuse this drum to put it back into service. The actual size, if you can read this, okay. I'm going to rock it, and my maximum diameter, I'm going to say it's 229 plus, what's that, four little lines above that? That makes for 0.4 millimeters. So on paper, my actual size is 229.4 millimeters. Okay, that's drum number one. Let's go do drum number two. I'll set this one aside. Here's a little bigger drum. This drum, okay, maximum diameter is 251.55 millimeters. Let's find out its actual size, okay? Clear that off. Okay, so I grab my drum micrometer. I'm going to find 25 centimeters and 25 centimeters. All right? Because I'm looking for 251. This die will measure 3 millimeters beyond 250. And so here's 25 as well. I know these lines are hard to see. I'm not sure why they made it so vague, <laughs> but that's what they did. Okay, let's go see what we got. Once again, if I push this plunger, if it read zero, that'd be exactly 250. And I'm allowed up to 251.55 for the maximum. If it gets beyond that diameter, we're supposed to discard or throw away the drum and buy a new one. Okay, so having said that, let's, let's do some measuring. So, Look at this drum. 250 would be zero if the needle was there, but the needle is beyond the one. I'm at 251 and about, looks like I'm getting pretty close to five. I don't know if that angle's good for you. If I lay this down or I can actually push on this and you actually make it measure its maximum, I'm getting 251.5. Actual size, 251.5 millimeters. I'm pretty close to max. Um, that's a decision a technician would have to make, okay? Personally, I'd probably determine what's the value of this vehicle before I decided on the drum. <laughs> okay, let's go to drum number three, our last one. So, set this one aside. This drum, maximum diameter is 201 millimeters. I'm going to set the micrometer up for 200. 
And again, it's only one millimeter beyond that. I'm actually going to flop this around to where I guess you'd call the even numbers. So there's a 20 centimeters or 200 millimeters. And the same over here. Where's the 20 centimeters or 200 millimeters? It's right there. Okay. So once again, we're set up for 200 millimeters. And if that read exactly the zero, we're 200. But we're allowed up to 201 for the maximum diameter. Okay. What do we have? Let's put it in. Looks like we're just over 200. I'm getting like 200 and point six. No, I'm sorry, point seven. 200 and point seven millimeters. 200 point seven millimeters. This drum's okay going to be put back in surface service. Now, I want to uh, I want to point one thing out. It's probably going to almost uh, ruin this this little presentation <laughs> meaning this. Um, this drum right here, it's been machined a few times. And if you look closely here, there's a sharp corner. What we call the bevel has been machined out. It's been, the drum was worn, it's been machined, and they took the diameter, they made the diameter of the drum big enough that it took out what we call a bevel. And I'll show you what I, mean, what I mean by a bevel. This drum right here is actually in really good shape. This has the bevel. It's this little chamfer, if you will, okay? Um, we're going to get to that. I'll conclude on my conclusion, but this little chamfer, if you will, or a bevel, it's still in place. If the bevel is still in place, the drum is likely just fine to reuse or machine and reuse. Once we've machined it and the bevel's disappeared, it's likely the drum, if it came with a bevel, um, uh, it's likely, uh, if the bevel's gone, it's likely to be discarded. But we really should measure it just to make sure, because not all drums happen to have that bevel. A lot do, but not all. Okay. So, some conclusions. Granted, the drum micrometer is really not a common tool, but the principles and understanding the measuring of a drum is what I was really after today. Out of round drums, now, I'm going to show this micrometer is still set up for my 200 millimeter drum. In the past, we've been taught that somewhere around eight to ten thousandths of an inch of a drum being out of round might be enough to cause a brake pedal pulsation. Here is another reason for brake pedal pulsation. It's not just thickness variation for uh, rotors on the disc brakes. If you've got rear drum brakes, which is still they're still manufacturing vehicles with rear drums, not, not a lot, but they still manufacture some. We need to consider, here are the drums out of round, but the likelihood is pretty small. The amount of pressure going to the rear brakes is obviously quite small in today's world, especially on the front wheel drive cars. But to measure out of round, all I simply do is I take my reading, like we found earlier, this was 200, uh, what, points, 200 millimeters, 0.7 and you rotate the drum maybe a third or a fourth and measure and compare. Still measuring point, oh, I'm point eight above now. I'm gonna rotate it again and almost point eight above. Back to here, just over point seven. Where was my smallest area? Looks like that's my smallest area. So the amount of difference amount of difference, 200 point, what, 8 was my largest, 200.7 was my largest, 0.1 millimeter, well, 0.1 millimeters we mentioned earlier is about 4 thousandths of an inch 
out of round. That's not a serious issue. We start getting above eight or 10, that could cause a pulsation. That's the theory of it all. Okay, we already talked about the bevel or chamfer. Again, it's an indicator. It's not a sure test, but it is an indicator. Lastly, I wanna close with this conversion factor. And I wrote it in red so that it'd be easily recognized. This is how I convert from metric or millimeters to inches or inches back to millimeters. And I'll show an easy example. Back to this 200 millimeter drum. We already know it actually measured 200.7, at least in the area I measured it. <laughs> so just to go from metric to inches, I'm going to times my 200 by this conversion factor, which simply gives me, I'm going to go 200. I could even go 0.7, couldn't I? It's my actual size. Times it by 0 0.03937 equals 7.9, what? I'll just call it 1.5. So, whoops, 7.915, uh, that's a zero, sorry. Zero 0.1. Let's go 7.901. Okay, that's the conversion. Let's measure it. Here's a little fancier, flashier uh, drum micrometer, digital. Many people would probably subscribe to this and say, why am I wasting my time with the other one? <laughs> Let's measure it. I've already got it in inches and I'm in the ballpark. 7.913. I'm going to go back to metric. I'll just push the button and I'm at 200.9. So there's a slight calibration difference from this one to the other, other micrometer. That's, that's normal. That's, that's just part of life. But again, here's a, the flat rate way to convert back and forth from inches to, met, to metric. And um, if you want to convert, if you wanted to convert from inches back to metric, you'd simply divide. I would take, say, a nine and a half inch drum. Let's go a 9.5 inch drum divided by 0 0.03937. That equals 241, 241.3 millimeters. And that's uh, how to use a metric drum micrometer. Thank you for watching.